Hi, so I wanted to make a really quick context-free grammar for the empty set. So this denotes the set of strings that this particular grammar G uh, generates, and we want it to have the empty set. So how can we actually do that? Well, remember that every single grammar has to have four things. It has to have variables. It's got to have terminals. Or I guess you can call variables non-terminals. It, it just uh, it means the same thing. It's got to have rules. And it must have some start variable. It's got to have those four things in order to be a context-free grammar. So uh, it really depends on the definition of, the, of what the context-free grammar actually is. So it's unambiguous that there must be a, a start variable. So let's say that the start variable is s, and then that means the set of variables must include s because it's a, there's a variable, it's called s. But um, as I'll show, you can actually have more variables uh, in the set than this. Well, for terminals, it really depends on the definition. So uh, some textbooks say that you must have a terminal at least, but in some other contexts, the terminals may or may not be there. You could have an empty set of terminals. It's not required. Let's assume that you must have a terminal in the in the uh, terminal set. So let's call it A, and maybe let's just restrict it to one terminal. Since we want to not generate any strings of terminals at all, we want to keep this set as small as possible, but it, it actually won't matter in the end. And for the rules set, it actually might matter <laughs> based on the definition, whether you must have a rule or you don't have to have a rule. So if we're uh, allowed to not have a rule, say like no rules whatsoever, then we're already done. Because any set of variables and any set of terminals you have, doesn't matter how many rules you have, uh, sorry, it doesn't matter what they have, as long as there's no rules, then I can't apply anything from the start variable, which means I can't get a string of terminals anyway. But let's suppose that you must have some rule in the in the grammar. So let's say that we must have something in here. So what would we actually put there? Well, one thing that you can do, which is really easy to get the empty language, is just have s be replaced with, with s. So here, this uh, I claim this grammar has empty language. Well, can I generate any string of terminals? Well, here, I'd have to start at the start variable. There's only one rule here, obviously. And uh, here, uh, I can't get a string of just terminals on the right-hand side. I must have a variable here. And so therefore, by induction, therefore, I can't get a string of terminals from this. Because, well, there's no terminals in the whole grammar's rules anyway. But even if there were, then this wouldn't help us very much. In fact, we could actually modify this. So if I had like three A's, for example, right here, then this grammar also has the empty language because um, even though there are terminals here, they're always attached to the start variable. So it doesn't actually matter that they're present because I can never get rid of this variable here. If I added a rule like goes, uh, S goes to epsilon also, then this grammar can make something because I eventually I can make the S go away like this. But here, um, just like this, I can't. But I could, for example, have an A, S in there. Even though these two rules are different, there's still an S attached in both cases. I could even have, like, an, uh, it goes to some variable T, where T goes back to S or something. So maybe we forbid allowing a variable to have itself appear on the right-hand side. Well, then what this do, what this does is, no matter what you do, there's always going to be a T present. And then once I have a T, I always have to convert it back to an S. And so we're back at the same scenario that we started with. So there are lots and lots and lots and lots of grammars that have empty language. But it actually is possible um, to note that you can actually make such a grammar really easily just based on the definitions here. If there are no terminals allowed, uh, sorry, if you're allowed to have no terminals, then any rule that you make must have no terminals in it. 
um, which corresponds to whether you can make the empty string or not, which is a lot easier to figure out. If you're allowed to have no rules, then that automatically has empty language. If we are if we're required to have a rule, then we can simply do something like this, then we can make a grammar that has empty language really easily. If we're allowed to have no variables, then that's really easy because I can't replace the S variable with anything, but that's a contradiction because I must have a start variable according to the definition of a context-free grammar. Um, it's actually possible to figure out whether a grammar has empty language or not. It's a decidable problem, and I've done that video before. Link is in the video description and the card up, <laughs> up there. And um, it, yeah, so that's actually really interesting to figure out whether a grammar's language is empty. But we can definitely construct such a grammar ourselves.